Hey everybody, Hello, how you doing? Man. Sorry, we're running a little late today because uh, tech issues. So uh, stick with us. We're on board. We're going to get going here in just a minute. Awesome. All right. All right. Very good. <laughs> I have posted. Oh, boy. Great. All right. I've shared it. It's uh, seems like it's working now. Yeah, seems like it's good. going good. Mm-hmm. All righty, all righty then. Let me see. I just want to get here and okay, I'm gonna delete this one. Yeah, I don't want people to get confused. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid on my sites of the old one, just to make sure that we're clear. Sorry, folks, we're running a little bit late today, but we'll be right to the show in just a minute. The uh, tech, tech problems. Actually, this always happens when <laughs> William is here, so I, I yeah, don't know what's you know. going. You know, he says he doesn't know anything about it, but yeah. I hear that a yeah. lot. In you my know, business. the drama drives up uh, viewer views. Yeah. Is what I've heard. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Cool. There you go. Uh -huh. That that is true. <clears throat> yep. I'm ready. All righty. Day to day, the guy I love having on the show, and I think we've had him on the show more than anybody else, five-time Bernie Applebox winner, <laughs> Mr. William Helmuth. Thanks for having me on again. Oh, yeah, you bet. You <laughs> Surprised bet. Uh, sure. you haven't gotten tired And of you're yet. still getting the same yeah. pay you got on the first four. I know, yeah. 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 I thought you were doubling it. On this <laughs> I could. That's right. Great. I could. Yeah, let's do it. Wouldn't yeah. cost me any more. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. So, so today... I got, oh, let me let me give a hand uh, a hand out, a shout out to Mr. Tony over here on yeah. the desk, the guy that we have driven absolutely <laughs> crazy. Yeah. We had to restart the show. We had to abort the show. It was frozen up. V Mix was frozen up. So Good times. we Good we times. we had to come back, and that's when Tony <laughs> earns the money right there. And of course, then yes. we do things like he lines all the cameras up and. That's, we move yeah, our chairs, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. You guys yep. end up, yeah. yeah. Everybody's got to go to the bathroom and That's get right. a drink. Yep. And, That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, we, guys. Actually, a secret is we do that intentionally just to drive Tony <laughs> crazy. And it works every time. It does. Too, by, yeah. my gosh. Mm -hmm. So, William. William, William. Thank you for being here, sir. Of course. Much appreciated. Yeah. And uh, we're going <laughs> to talk about several things, mm -hmm. but... but and, we, and we don't have to just start killing it right now on this, but I yeah, just want to sure. tell everybody, you know... There is something that we all have, and I think it's to a certain degree. You don't have to have, be in this business to have it, but it's called imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that is where you somehow, even after 20 years of experience, even after being on top of your, your game for a long time mm -hmm. and, and really staying on it, Something inside of you is telling you, oh, you don't know everything. You you know, you better be careful what you say. Or they're going to find out that you don't know as much as you think you know. Okay? Right. And it's something you do inside your head. It, 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 it's self-defeating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
But to a certain degree, we all have a little bit of it in sure. one subject or another, yeah. you know. And I, I know I was saying when we, you know, we, we were talking about this mm -hmm. that I can be in the, you know, 20 years in this business talking right. about G&E and stuff like that. And I can see a picture on Facebook, and I, I think to myself, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, I, would I know how to do what? that? Yeah. You know, would, would, would I know? How to, it, the answer is yes, you would, but right. you haven't been called upon to yeah. think it through yet. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And you get that. That says you do the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone does. It's like, you know, you can you can um, when you when you're creating stuff yourself. Yes. You you see you not only see that final image that you make. But you also, at least for me, whenever I see that final image, I see everything that went into making it. Yes. Know? So it's like yes. I can see if maybe that didn't take a lot of lighting work on my end to do. So yeah. then it might look great, but I'm like, oh, I just pointed the camera and hit record. Or I might, maybe it did take a lot of lighting to do, but it's like, but still, it's like you, when you see the work behind an image, at least for right. me, like it, something about it, like it just, like it's, it just doesn't click, like for me, like what, like um, uh, I'm not like impressed, like I am when I just see someone post like some awesome stills, yes, or yes. Or, or just an actual awesome video, <laughs> right? Most yeah. Of, most of the time these days, we just see stills from other people's work. We, wait, and like, we do on the yeah. social media, yeah, because yeah. that's really the 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 coin of the sure. realm, if you yeah. will. But like, yeah, when all you're seeing is that end result and not not everything that it took to get there, like you you do sort of question, you know. Like yes, little, whether I yeah. could have handled that or something. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you know what? It, it's a funny thing because <clears throat> we've all been, and this is why we actually get paid what we get paid. We've yeah. all been thrown into that situation of like, wow, that's right out of left field. Nothing prepared mm -hmm. me for what you're asking me to do now yeah. because everything changed from the last time we talked till now, mm -hmm. and now it's much different. Now you've got to get very creative. Mm -hmm. You've got to, you know, look at lighting a lot more people than you had right. say what you brought and you've got to get creative doing yeah. that that is when you prove to yourself you know what you're doing you know yeah. it yeah. really is because yeah. i remember things like it, one shoot i was doing for oakley one time in the opening of this mm -hmm. sort of corporate movie that mm -hmm. they were having you know and they assured me that it was just one person at mm -hmm. one time mm -hmm. all day of these 12 people <laughs> guess what the right. second shot of the day was all 12 yeah, people <laughs> all standing there yeah. with, with very little distance between them and mm -hmm. the camera, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I pulled it off. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Wasn't a magic man, you know what sure. I mean? It wasn't perfectly lit, but it was, it, it fit in with the rest of the piece. It was mm -hmm. attractive enough to do that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And good. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, that's so great. I can't believe you right. pulled that off. And, of course, that feels good. But you're feeling, still, I was feeling a little bit like, oh, I'm so glad that came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, because yeah. you don't know. And yeah. I think that's where it comes from, you know, is like, can you do this? And you yeah. see, it's just an expansion, right, of what you already know. It is, yeah. I mean, for me, um, when it comes to something like imposter syndrome, where you're worried that people are going to, like, I don't know, find out that you don't know everything, you yes. know, and that they're going to, yes. like, somehow, like, want to nail you for it. Um, like, there, there are, like, two things that, that I try to do. For one, I try to kind of lean into that and recognize, like, in a way, it's true. Like, I, I don't know everything. I'm Who not, does? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm always learning. Um, and there are some things that, like, uh, that might seem like pretty basic knowledge to other people, that I don't know, and right. that's that's okay, right? Like, you know, and vice versa. And then, and this is where I flip it, and and I need to remind myself that, like, yeah, I I don't know everything. There are many things I don't know, right? But there are, there's a lot I do know, and yeah. you know, and and I, sometimes what I do is like I'll, I'll look back on myself like two three years ago, and I try to, you know, look at like the work I was making then, and look at what I'm doing now, or. Um, I'll uh, uh, just kind of blanked out a little bit there. But <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah. So, like, that's, you know, you, you know, you let look, me say something right yeah, there. Yeah. You know, talk about the imposter sure. syndrome. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm getting a little older. I blank out now. Used to yeah. be I did what you did. I just yeah. go, oh, I just blanked out. Just now blanked. I'm going like, 
uh, uh, <coughs> well, uh, 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 <laughs> I don't want to say I blanked out right, because now right. I, I'm tagged with the old guy. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it happens that way, yeah. too. It's sort of yeah. your circumstances and kind yeah. of what you think people are going sure. to, the assessment they're going to make of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and you have to remember that no matter how much you don't know, that there are people who know less than you. <laughs> is what I remember. Like, <laughs> we can assure the world of yeah. that. We so can assure like, the world you know, of that, William. Like, Absolutely. Like, even before I knew anything about lighting and all I knew was camera, right. for example, um, before, before I started really uh, working as a DP, um, I had to remind myself that just beca- like, even just knowing camera and knowing how to frame and kind of like, right. kind of like find good light in a room, I knew more than uh, any non-professional out there. Oh, and, and absolutely. The, and, that, and not just, I didn't just know more than them, but that even just that bit of knowledge I had, had a lot of value, yes. like real value. Yes. And so like, that's, that's what I, you know, at that, at that level, that's what I kept reminding myself of. Yes. And then like, as, you know, as I learn more, um, I, I'm kind of like, just constantly reminding myself. Uh, it's that, I, I honestly like, it's that exact same thing over and over yeah. again for me. Yes, you know? yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Y- you know, for mm-hmm. me, it took the one time that somebody, and I had already be, always been playing um, tag along, I guess, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'd been the grip. So, you know, mm-hmm. I was never the guy who was the gaffer or right. in charge of the lighting, certainly not the DP, mm-hmm. anything like that. Then one time a client called me and I was assuming it was my regular workload. Yeah. You know, but this is before I even owned any lights. You know yeah. what I mean? And I went out there, they had the lighting and stuff. And, you know, I, I go, uh, who, who's the gaffer on this? She looks at me and goes, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I better figure it out. You know, it was so, that day, and I remember it just like this, but that day was so important for mm-hmm. my career. Yeah. Because when I walked away from that set that day, I had that for the first time mm-hmm. it, ever I, in this business, I had that, hey, you pulled it off yeah. and it looked you great, it. Yep. you know, yeah. that's so empowering, yeah. that's so powerful, you know what I mean? And you should be doing that for yourself. And here's mm-hmm. another one is you and I, if you make a mistake, hey, you made a mistake, a forgive mistake. yourself. Would yeah. you beat somebody up if they made a mistake? Would right. you say, oh, you made a mistake, you can never work again? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're worthless? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's, just, it's just that type of thing. Right. It's that self-belief, you know. And the, some of the most powerful DPs I have worked for, mm-hmm. you know, the best ones, yeah. really, yeah. have looked at me and go, what do you think? Yeah. Well, that's another thing I was going to say is... Um, embracing the fact that that on set as a DP or you know even a gaffer like you you may not know in like you may, you may not have as much knowledge as some of the people who are working for you yes um, and that's okay because this job isn't all about knowledge there's right. a lot of, you know about oh so much more than knowledge and yeah so much leadership more than abilities oh, um, there's, there's a lot that goes into it besides just how Absolutely. much do you know so um, so it's okay to be honest about like oh, you know what guys I don't actually know much about I don't know I can't I'm terrible at improvising but you know I don't yeah. know much about lighting a green screen yeah you know go to your gaffer like yeah. hey you know what do you know about this or whatever. right you know, right yeah well, and I'm sure you do what, what we do. I mm-hmm. mean, in, in my case, and, and it has been this way for almost 20 years of this, mm-hmm. I'm always hiring guys that know more than me. I yeah, select them because they know more than yeah. me. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, that is such a thing. Because I've got my ideas, and you know this, I'm, I'm sure, very mm-hmm. well. You know, you walked in with an idea, mm-hmm. and you got a better one on set. Right. Right? For yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. You know, maybe a guy did something, you know, this... What I've always loved on set is about being a gaffer is putting the light there, turning it on once mm-hmm. you get it powered up, and then the DP goes, "Oh my God, that's great!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I just set it down because I was tired of carrying yeah, it, you know, yeah. and uh, and that's always fun, you know, yeah. and that's always fun, and and to me, I want to get your take, but that's the way light works. It I is. never assume I know what's going to happen when I turn that it's light like, on. You know, you can have a pretty good idea, and most, and even a pretty near, in some cases, a pretty close to exact knowledge of what's yes. going to happen. You need to switch this light on, but that is one of one of my favorite things 
about scene, lighting a scene light is you flip on that light and you you kind of know like okay it's going to be kind of like this but i love turning that on and getting behind the camera and kind of going oh well that worked really well you know yeah. like, <laughs> i think that's the that's most fun. fun yeah it i is. think that's it the is. most fun yeah. you know is when you're doing that and you it looks so much better than you would have yeah you could you were imagining it yeah would. Or you so know, much worse. But, so you know. much worse. <laughs> I know. You, you know, my I, I, let me get your take on this. Yeah. My Bill, uh, my friend Bill Hoshevnikov yeah. uh, uh, had a saying. He was. I, I don't think this was his quote, but he was very, very fond mm -hmm. of, of saying it. There's only one right place for the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, and what he meant by that, in my interpretation of it, was. You may have the camera in a place, mm -hmm. but it may not be the right place. Maybe a good place, right. but it's not the right place. Right. You know, like when that light comes on, you do it. Give me mm -hmm. your take on that. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to argue with the great Bill. Oh, no, no, but, no, I don't no. think it's an um, argument. Yeah. He's, I, I wouldn't, I would, um, for me, I would say there's not, as far as camera placement goes, um, there's not always one right place to put the camera in relation to the light you know like it's um well i think and to tell you the truth because i think this is what, sure. what, what bill would interject is that i think so the yeah. right place doesn't just include the lighting it yes. includes the story yeah you know what and that, that's what i was and getting to it's yeah. just like it's it doesn't when i when i immediately hear that statement what I would initially think is, oh, well, that means like, you know, that there's always one kind of objectively best place to place the camera. Yeah. Uh, but in reality, yeah, like whatever the story or his intent or the intent is behind whatever it is you're shooting, whether yeah. it's talking head or, you know, a feature or whatever, um, that that one right place, that best place for the camera is is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Like with every single thing you shoot oh, with every, even uh, even, uh, even no, the lighting and blocking standard. and everything yeah, is it's all not the a same standard. yeah it's exactly not a standard. yeah I, I think to it he was looking at it, it's like once you find it you know it yes you yeah. know what i mean yep. and once yeah. you get that camera placed for that scene and that's what yeah. i'm talking about yeah. because it tells that particular part of the story I mean, but then something you know, I, I really like to do also when i'm shooting a movie which is um uh one of the reasons why i really like to shoot with the zooms is keeping an ex, uh, an element of exploration mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in the filming. So we kind of find that right place, you know, we frame it all up, everything's perfect, we shoot it, and then, you know, maybe we have an extra couple minutes or something, yeah. the director's got the take he likes. Yeah. Then, he, you know, the, the, the director and I can say, like, all right, well, what, what do we do if we zoom out all the way or yeah. zoom in? You know? Look at it. And then... You know, maybe once that happens, maybe we like it, maybe we don't. Yeah. Um, but like, the cool thing about that I found is like, is, is I can find stuff that um, that I never would have thought of before, angles or perspectives. Sure. Um, and and sometimes like that ends up being the right one. Mm. <laughs> so it's like, no, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, really, what it is is we get on set, the clock is always ticking. Yeah. We have very little time to experiment. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the bigger the budget, the more yeah. experimentation uh -huh. you can do. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that, but we ain't there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's on that. So getting those opportunities on set to yeah. experiment, to see something different, yeah. and maybe add to the, the, the production value, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. is huge. I want to ask you, because I think this is something that I know, you know, Visualization. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I have very good skills at visualization. Mm -hmm. You know what you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Tell me about when you're reading a script yeah. and you're seeing it, and you're visualizing it. What are you seeing? And let me define that a little yeah. bit. Camera mm -hmm. placement, because you're in context of the story. Right. Camera placement. Are you seeing lighting when you're looking at that first thing, or is that yeah. even important to you? You yeah. know, I, I mean, where do you, your visualization go when you're reading that script, mm -hmm. trying to assess, forgetting yeah. really the story for a little bit and just seeing each scene? Yeah. What's that like? Um, I mean, for me, honestly, first time, the very first time I read through a script, I pay a lot more attention to how I'm feeling. Um, and the images in my mind are pretty abstract. They're not concrete at all. Okay. I try to lean into that 
um, into that intuition, I guess, of yeah. just like, how, how am I feeling when I'm reading this? Uh, am I seeing, sometimes I'll see uh, colors, you know, kind of okay. flashing through my mind. Or uh, like you're feeling this is warm yeah, or this uh -huh. is cool, yep, yep. you know. It's a lot like when I'm reading a when I would read a book, you know. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot more subjective, mm -hmm. almost like I'm a character, like that first person perspective. Yes. But there are still uh, elements uh, like imagery kind of flashing through my mind. Yeah. So usually, what it takes is like several reads of a script, okay, you know, of a scene, okay, uh, breaking that down and usually writing down, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm all about free association, so mm -hmm. maybe, you know you mentioned like, oh, warm. This feels mm. warm, which is going to make me think about like. Um, and do you do that in just, your own mind while you're reading the script? Do you free associate a little uh, bit, or, no, or is it for, that, the, the, that the free association? It's it's part of the breaking down process. Yeah. Okay. But when I'm reading, it's more just paying attention to how I'm feeling and at really broad strokes. Yes. Usually. Like yes, just, yes, yes. You know. Um, like I mentioned, you know, like you said, warm or or maybe colors or just general feelings that I'm feeling throughout everything uh, as I'm reading the script. And then it's kind of like slowly taking the like these big broad feelings that I have as I'm reading, and mm. then kind of like funneling funneling them through okay. this process to where it, it goes from these big broad feelings to like um, you know I, I kind of like the, the, this free association thing I do, and I kind of see try to see. Uh, words that might pop up a bunch, you know, okay. and then from there I start seeing these things. Sure. And I'm like, oh well, this is a this is a language here. This is a cinematic language or a style that I'm starting. To, okay. Maybe I'll see certain thematic elements repeated throughout the story or the mm -hmm. script, and then from there it's like bringing that down even more and saying like, well, okay, like, um, given these ideas, what about like lens choices, focal length, you know, like what kind of focal lengths do I want to use in, in every scene in this movie? Uh, usually, like with, with every with every script I read, I try to develop like a, a language for that, a visual language. Okay. Um, and and stick to those rules as closely as I, as I can while while we're filming. So what that would mean is, I mean, typically in a visual language that 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 I would make, like focal length plays a very very large role sure. in that because the perspective you're seeing everything. Well, the, and yeah. then and then from there, like light, mm -hmm. like you know, and I do get very specific with the kind of lighting I want. Mm -hmm. In a scene, okay, um, and yeah, just kind of like it. It just you know, it, uh, it's hard to describe, but it goes from that big like intuition, yes, down and just I, I keep just boiling you, it you down, keep, funneling yeah. it. So until, you start like, it's with really a feel. Yeah. You start with a feel, right. and, and then and then you're getting sort of a color feel yeah. too. You're getting the warm, the cool, yeah. all of that, yeah. and then breaking it down now more specifically mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. a scene and what lens you're going mm -hmm. to use and what focal length that you have yeah. and, and all of that. Yeah. You do that. Now tell me what, it, I, I mean, and that's kind of broad because you're not sure. doing it yet. I mean, in other mm -hmm. words, when you walk into that actual scene that you've thought out yeah. all through. I mean, but that's why you need to do the process because what the scene is about, what the visual language is, isn't necessarily oh, well, we want, like, you know, a 5-1 ratio or something, like, you know, yeah. and, yes. and we yes. want the, the scene is about, like, um, a, uh, the, the, the scene is about a, a core belief or, or, or an emotional event yes. is, is what it is. Like, maybe these two characters are getting closer or farther apart, you know, something like that. And accentuating mm -hmm. that and then with that the style can, of that can play out mm -hmm. mul multiple ways. It visually or with actors' performances, or this this is like the exact same way an actor would break down a script, pretty mm -hmm, much. Mm -hmm. And and then that frees you when you're on set to not be married to this like oh no it must be like this focal yeah. length or this kind of lighting or whatever because sometimes you walk into a space and in that moment you realize just like with a performance like to, that that this this core this emotional event you're trying to capture is best captured another way. Yes. Because that's what matters, not... That not is the, what yeah. matters, mm -hmm. not what your preconceived ideas yeah. uh -huh. are on doing this. Yeah. Also, let me mm -hmm. ask this, because mm -hmm. this, you know, being a gaffer, not a DP, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? This is something I'm not really ever called upon to really look. Yeah. But the overall look and feel for the movie. Now, I know that's going to come yeah. from direction, too. It that's is. That's going to yeah. come from the director. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing that overall, tell me, do you have, like, a, a, a thing that that's... I know you're taking these pieces and putting mm -hmm. them all together. You know, um, I don't have a great example to give you, but just speak to that, maybe. Sure. 
So you you mean like when? Um, Let me say it like if it's yeah. a taxi driver. Okay, okay. It just because I'm old yeah. guy and I think <laughs> taxi yeah. driver. But but you know Scorsese went in that with a real feel. Yes. I mean he went that yeah. street gritty feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Say something like um, some some I don't know something much warmer, much happier, mm -hmm. much more feel good is going to have more color, more right. You know what I mean? Yeah. More more warmth, more mm -hmm. more all of that. How do you formulate that? Is that formulating or is that after the process? That I don't know. That's definitely in pre-production. Like yeah. and that's part of that like that kind of funnel pro funneling yeah. process where and a lot of this is, you know, the the, the whole process I described is also involves heavy discussion like discussions with the director yeah. figuring out who she wants yeah um and that's um yeah and so kind of like before getting down into each scene i try to figure out the you know what, what's our overarching language here like what are we what's the um uh overall visual arc of the yes of the of the where film. does the story go yeah yeah um and then uh, from there, it's like kind of breaking off of that into every individual scene and moment, you know. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, a lot of that is just like, you know, creating that unifying look is it, that is in pre-production, figuring out, you know, what kind of like colors are we going for, yeah. or, you know, the the exposure. Like you, you're trying to, you're figuring that out, figuring that out in pre-production because once you're on set, like things are way you too better have it to locked like, in. Yeah. Then. yeah, and and it has to be like. So become pretty like second nature when you're actually yeah. shooting it because um, in the moment when you're just trying to make something like look decent on set, you know, just like get it in the can, it can be really hard to have the presence of mind to just know, you know, to to, to remember to, all that and yeah, keep yeah. it in so, context so you really, to what you're you doing. You've got to work it out beforehand. Yeah, yeah, you can't, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think we got a, a a question, don't we, Tony? Uh, we do, actually. Hey. Yeah. All yeah, right. We love questions. Watching today. Yeah. We love uh, questions. Very exciting. Oh. Uh, it's actually, yeah, I guess it's kind of a question. Uh, and I'm going to butcher this, sorry. Uh, Nicholas uh, Geisler, Geisler uh, would like to know, uh, or like to hear more about your thoughts on working with art department uh, on low budget. Mm, very uh, good. Low budget features uh, as, after reading the script. Boy, art department. On low, low budget. You know um, what? That that tied into something, and just yeah. just to tag on here too, because I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Who determines colors? I mean, where where? How does how is that process? Well, that, I don't want to yeah. rob that question though, yeah. but oh yeah, sure. Just, I mean, because that's a big part of art department. Yeah. Um, that I mean, the buck always stops with the, with the director. Of course. Um, and usually, I mean, in my in my experience, that's almost always been the director. You know, that's that's. Sitting there and figuring out, like, here are the here are the main colors I want to accentuate. Some directors don't care about it as much. Um, some are more collaborative. Some come to me and are immediately, you know, like, they like want here are the colors. Like, yeah. they want this, this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's in the script, and it's like, well, okay, like that's it. Right. Um, but sometimes the director isn't isn't as specific about things like color palette or whatever, and is more into like a a general aesthetic, like, um, you know, oh, I want this to have like this 70s vibe or something, you know. And so I would take that and then I'd, and then I'd talk to the director and say, well, what do you think about maybe like this kind of color palette, yeah. you know, and then they say, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. And then like, yeah, that kind of trickles down into art department. Sure. Definitely sure. trickles down into art department, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, art so, like, is, is like, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a major player. Yeah. yeah. So low, on, a, on a low budget with uh, cl collaborating with art department. Um, art department, just like everyone else, isn't usually going to have as much control yeah. on, a, on a low budget film yeah. because, um, you know, we're probably going to be shooting an Whatever existing Whatever the process is, it's going to be three times as hard. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, with yeah. no budget. And that's, that's fine. Like, sometimes that's a fun challenge, you know, yeah. but like typically lower budget, uh, we're going to be shooting in existing locations. So there's like, so there's some limited control and hopefully locations kind of line up with that color palette. Yes, right. <laughs> they, right. you know, usually if you're able to work out that color palette before locations are locked, then then we can make all that, you know, locations and everything kind of fit in. Yeah. Um, so anyway, discussions with art department are usually going to be uh, a lot more centered around like, 
um, how the two of you can work together mm -hmm. to kind of get the most out of this location. You sure. know? So I might come in and say like, well, you know, the shooting this way is going to be so much easier in here. You know, um, I like the light coming from those windows maybe, or, you know, just things like that. And then, sure. and then that would kind of help them know sort of what to, which what to direction do, I guess. Or, yeah, which I, I don't know. Like it's, our, I guess like the, it's, like the collaboration with any any department head, like the the core of the collaboration, isn't really gonna, cha gonna change that much mm -hmm. with budget level. I guess if you get really big budget, it can pretty much become a discussion of, you know, well, well here's what we want, and there's like, okay, go great, let's it. go do it. Yeah, go get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but but know. you know what? I am a believer, and I think I've been in business long mm -hmm. enough to know. You always see the guy on the other side of the fence having it a lot better than you. In mm -hmm. other words, budget doesn't fix everything. Yeah. And sometimes being yeah. more nimble really makes for a better story. It mm -hmm. makes, makes you know, um, gosh, there was uh, so many like low budget features. I'm trying yeah. to think the name of a specific one that came out. Money, where the guy said money all the time. Swingers. Swingers. Okay. <laughs> Swingers to me was a yeah. classic, classic low budget, pulled it off, right. made a comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you look at I mean, there's I there's one time, you know, that they're obviously shooting the rehearsal that they used right. in the movie. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it's apparent to you if you know what you're yeah. doing because it was just one camera angle. Yeah. No cutaways. You and know what just I mean? Got it. But it totally yeah. worked. Yeah. It mm -hmm. totally worked. And you know, it's almost more exciting seat of your pants. It is shoestring. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that can be fun. Yeah, yeah. Depends on the production. But it yeah, that depends can be cool. on the production. Yeah. And look, let's face it, all of this depends on who's the head of the art department, yeah. who's the DP, who's the gaffer. You want to spend 10 hours with somebody you like and yeah. is contributing to the right. effort, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Otherwise, you're going to have all the budget in the world to be miserable. I, I do find like it helps a lot on, um, especially more, it helps all the time, but. Especially on these tighter budgets, yeah. When department heads can really pull together, oh. and they're not territorial, Has you know, to be. <laughs> and like, Has to and, be. And, and I can be, like, willing to be flexible yeah. in order to accommodate the art department and vice versa. Yeah. Like, you know, we can really kind of sit down and, and. I think it should know, be yeah. that way because mm -hmm. everybody's head should be on the same game. Yeah. It's not yeah. what I want; it's what makes the picture better. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line, yeah. and, and any anyone in any business or any mm -hmm. company should be thinking that sure. way. Absolutely. I, I think we might have another question. We got something, Tony? <laughs> we, uh, we do, actually. We do. Hi, everyone. I'm back. Hello. I like seeing me. Tony, ah. Tony, Tony. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Um, okay, let me parse through this. This comes from Mark Jacobs. Mark right. Jacobs. Uh, yeah, who's uh, director of photography in Los Angeles. So yes. In Vegas. Yes. Uh, let me see if I can parse. It's, it's kind of long. Um, <laughs> having to always think fast on my feet, I've always relied on current technology to help deal with low budget financially and low budget of time. How do you deal with it? I guess more in the sense of, of lighting. It says technology in the world of sensors seem to have made it more light sensitive, so I'm actually using less light through LED tubes and not necessarily old school. Uh, old school lighting and stuff. So I guess okay. it's kind of how do you deal with you know with lighting on set and in, in, in this new world of technology? Uh, I mean, we can get into that actually a little bit with uh, one of the scenes, both the scenes. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that well, I, that, that may I be show. a perfect. But time. Um, I mean, we don't necessarily have to show them right now. But a lot of yeah. what I do, we um, is <laughs> I... yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, why don't we why don't we show that scene and you come back and use that as an example as to what you want to say? Sure. Okay, great. Okay, uh, which one would you like, the cottage scene or the diner scene? Diner. Diner. Oh, that diner scene was good. I posted that on mine. Oh, wow. Remember that? I, po I posted <laughs> it on right. mine. Yeah, yes. it was great. All right, here we go. Any way you like. Can you tell me what time it is? Sure, it's 8.06. Looks like you could use a bite to eat. A coffee, please. Dag nabbit. Want anything with it? Seven gallons of gas. Excuse me? I got exactly seven gallons of gas. It cost $17.97. I gave him $20. That was at 5 p.m. You 
okay? It's 8.06. I should have been home 36 minutes ago in West Haven with my wife, but instead here I am in... Where am I, anyway? Saybrook. You sure you don't want some food? No, no food. I lost an hour. You lost an hour. Are you sure that clock is right? Yeah, always has been. Hey, Mr. Osgood, is that clock up there right? Only that. I was pretty sure. I remember taking Route 3, like I usually do, and passing the old army barracks, the farm equipment, the graveyard. Tell you what. Coffee's on me tonight. I must have backtracked somewhere. phone that I can use? My phone is dead. Not in here. There's an old pay phone outside. Wow, dude, that looked great. Thanks. That looked yeah. great. Very interesting, too. I, yeah. I honestly, I wanted to, <laughs> well, I wanted to see, I almost asked you, what's, what's the story about? Because that movie, that's just a quick little plug. That's okay. called uh, The Hour After Westerly. Okay. Um, I shot that last uh, winter. Yes. Um, it's premiering at the L.A. Shorts International Film Festival next uh, Thursday. Oh, great. On the 18th. Uh, 5 30 p.m. Uh, you can find it on their website. Okay. Um, Maybe yeah. we can make a post on our on yeah, this show uh, about it. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's premiering there. It's been accepted into several other film festivals now as well. So it's got a, it's getting off to a pretty good start. That's awesome. Um, anyway, but that particular scene um, was in this really really tiny space. This little diner. And uh, Mark, this is getting at your question. Um, that, that whole scene was lit with, I used really like two lights for the actors mm -hmm. and one light as like a, an accent light. So. Hold on. What's up? Just before, check your mic pack, oh. will you? Oh, what? Mic turned off. Oh, mic turned off. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. There we yeah, go. Why don't you start Sorry over. about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Great. Um, where, where should I pick up from? Yeah. Whatever you want. Where are you? Okay, cool. Answer, answering the question. Okay, great. Yeah. So, um, in case my mic was out real quick, that scene we just showed is from a movie called The Hour After Westerly. Yeah. It's a short film I shot last winter. Okay. And it is going to be premiering at the LA Shorts International Film Festival next Thursday on the 18th. Okay, 5 30 awesome. p.m. So, if you want to see it, you can find the tickets on their website. Um, I'll be there. We can chat about it. Yeah. That particular scene from that movie, uh, it's one of my favorites in the film. Um, and this kind of goes back to Mark's question. Mark is his name? Yeah, Mark. Um, we had very limited time in that restaurant. Um, very little resources. Uh, what I did there is I dropped ND into my camera okay. uh, so that I was dimming down. Yeah. And then I had two one-by-one little panels, your panels. They're yeah. the, um, which ones are they? Were I'm they the Astras? Or yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. No, they, they were like um, the flex ones. Flex lights. Oh, yeah, flex lights. Yeah, My yeah. Flex lights. So I had yeah. two, two flex lights, and that's all I used to light the actors. That's so, amazing. So um, I put some haze in there for some atmosphere. Right. And used the the fluorescents that were in there. I just right. kind of figured, like, yeah, they've got kind of a dirty green look. So that look. one you had above, behind her in the kitchen, was that a was that a just a standard tube? That was yeah. That was a standard. Yeah, tube? Yeah, standard tube. Yeah, I didn't replace wow. anything. <laughs> I just wow. I just uh, exposed for it so that it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be blowing out or anything like that. Yeah. I wanted to bring the levels in the diner down, and then uh, hit the actress actress with the one by one panel. Yeah. And then I also had a backlight. Uh, hidden behind a corner. It was a teeny tiny space. Yeah. Uh, backlighting her and King, Peter Jacobson. And then we had a little tungsten with a red party gel on it to motivate it by like a neon sign a that neon was outside. A neon sign outside. Um, but that was fun. So it was just like those three lights. Um, we set it up quickly. You know, very minimal resources. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean... That's, that's it <laughs> came out perfectly, dude. It looked yeah. great. Yeah, and a lot of that for me, like when I'm um, dealing with limited time, 
uh, limited re resources. A lot of it is kind of walking into the room and thinking about like, what is the light actually doing in here? Yeah, because like we don't realize so that we don't necessarily always need to build the lighting from the ground up. Yes. you know, we can yes. come in and kind of figure it out. And then if you can really grasp what's happening in there, then you can maybe know like, well, let's shut off these lights back here, which right. I which I ended up not even doing in that place. I left all the lights on. Yeah. You know, maybe shut some lights off or block some light here and there and then right. bring in some of our own. But if you can grasp that and then figure out how you're going to capture that actual ambient light, yeah. then like from there, there's not a lot of work left when it comes to just kind of like lighting your actors. Motivating. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, yeah. I, I think I'm so glad to hear you just mm -hmm. use it light little package like, like light yeah. and, and yeah. lightweight but but really nice i love those flex lights too yeah they're, they're awesome tony we got another question uh we do actually yeah a lot of comments um i love name, it what's the name of that place by the way the diner oh i don't i can't remember Tony's it's this tiny <laughs> little diner in uh, uh no somebody somebody yeah. said westcott's with a question mark oh westcott's i think he meant the brand of the lights yeah the westcott lights. Yeah. westcott yeah. flex yeah, yeah westcott flex lights yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question uh, from Curtis Boggs. Oh, Curtis. Uh, Curtis, yes, Curtis. Curtis, our okay, main man. Uh, how do you balance a very heavy shot list with enough time to properly light and shoot a scene? And how much time does a typical scene take like the diner? Um, well, how do I balance a heavy shot list with enough time to properly... I cut shots. No, not really. <laughs> 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 no. no, I mean, a lot of that the for me... Way. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> I mean, you know, that that's so much of that is is the director and and, and how quickly they're going to be able to kind of to work with the talent right. and 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 get things moving, I guess. Right. Um, cuz there's a director who's not who's good at like communicating quickly and efficiently to me and to the talent and kind of everyone in the crew, then we can get moving really quick. And then usually what I try to do is take a little bit of extra time during the setup. Yeah. to to set set up lights so that I can kind of roam with the camera, um, and then you're not that, just stuck with one setup. Like yeah. you make a setup that you're gonna you can't get out of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when that happens, like if, if I know like with this lighting, I can kind of it's gonna look good from like over here and over here and over here. It may not look as good as if I was adjusting the lights, uh, you know. But sometimes sometimes a scene is more about the amount of coverage in the shots than it is about yes, the light. Yes. And so when that's the case, like, yeah, it's, man, that's a, that's a, you, you, just, you, just, you just have to try to light for, yeah, you know, yeah. for the, the space instead mm -hmm. of the actors, I mm -hmm. guess is what I'm saying. You know what, too, and, and this was an approach that I, I learned mm -hmm. why I was doing it, because I, I came in with sort of an approach, and remember, this is, old days we're talking yeah. about now, Betacam, yeah. where, you know, it was a 2K for the key light, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and going smaller, easier, mm -hmm. lighter, yeah. you know? Um, seeing how much, and I mean this in the sense of lighting, mm -hmm. see how less I could do, you yeah, know? sure. But, you know, with the thing with me, and because a lot of my projects were not narrative, mm -hmm. they're always too dramatic for the pieces that we were doing. I mean, it was not correct when I yeah. when I wanted to get something that I really yeah. liked, yeah. you know? And, uh, and you said, but you have to light the piece. You yeah. have to light yeah. the story. You light the story yeah. for the That's emotional true. content. That's really what you do. And then the second part of the question was, how long does a typical scene like the diner take? But that specific scene? I'm trying to remember. That was a long time ago, but I think that was, well, not that long ago, but. <laughs> it, uh, it's a long time in I DP think, years. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was four hours. That's so, fast. Yeah, dude. yeah. I that's mean, fast. My, For an elemental scene, that was a crucial scene. Yeah, right? it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got there, and I, I think we had lighting set up within an hour. Um, again, like minimal lighting, you know. Yeah. What took, uh, what ate up most of the time in that scene was that it, 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 we were right next to a very, very busy street. Oh, no. And so, so car lights coming in or anything No, no, like no that car or? lights. It was this audio. Oh. Loud car. So Peter Jacobson, uh, lead actor, he was playing that scene and was like, uh, well, we, we had to do it line by line, basically. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. Like, cause he'd get like two lines in and then just... Every <laughs> time he starts to <laughs> like, emote. <laughs> was, yeah. But then he'd just get right back into it. You yeah. know, and that's yeah. the That's, that's a good actor. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Great actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tony, did we have another question? We do. Awesome. We got more. We got, we got some more. Guys are gonna get tired of seeing Hey, thanks everybody for posting questions because we yes, really like this. Thank you. We yeah, like the interaction. Absolutely, we love it. 
Uh, this happening. comes from Mark De Leon, so we're going to go in a little different Mark. direction. We're going in a dark direction now. Uh, <laughs> how do you deal with a director that loves to take over the camera? If you've ever had to deal with something like that before. Yeah, sounds like that's yeah. happened to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, honestly, uh, for me, it's just managing expectations, yeah. like between both the director and, and me. So it's yeah. those discussions in pre-production. And, you know, if I'm talking with a director in pre-pro and, and he tells me, you know, and I'm going to ask him too, like, you know, how involved do you want to be? Like, uh, do you want to be operating some and and, oh, and, and if he does that, that, that's okay that, like that's, to grab I, that actually like that doesn't bother me if, yeah. what, what bothers me what 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 when it can become uh, a problem is when you know you walk on set and and or when I walk on set and I'm expecting to kind of to be the one I guess like calling the shots you know yes um I, you're never like 100% calling the shots as the DP no, but it's like no. um you have to figure that out in pre-pro. So mm -hmm. the, if the director tells me in pre-pro, um, I have very specific ideas of exactly the shots I want, and that needs to not bother you, then it's like, you know, great, cool. Like, yeah. in fact, sometimes I actually really enjoy that really specific direction from a director. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it shows me that, like, that this director has a really specific vision. He of has a like, very yeah, good exact, understanding yeah. of what he's trying yeah. to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know where I've found it? If you have a director who has not been a DP, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then that's usually the director that is sitting back doing that. And yeah. most, most directors have worked with the camera before, mm -hmm. obviously, right. because they were starting to build their, build their career, yeah. build mm -hmm. their skill sets, you know? But the ones that have been a working DP for mm -hmm. like several years and then they go into directing, I found those are the ones that can't keep their hands off right. the camera. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're the ones that are just like, okay, let me just do this for a second. Okay? Right, right. And then there's a little pan and they're happy. I mean, but and they the do difficulty, not think they're going to get it otherwise. Right. I mean, and the difficulty there as the DP is then you're kind of left wondering like, do they like what I'm doing or like, so like for me, as long as there's of that course. understanding that like, you, yeah. you know, you know, you know that the director knows sometimes. you're contributing, but, but that he's going to come in and just, just get it. Cause it's easier for him just to do right. it than trying to communicate it to you. Right. Then I'm like, okay, like that's cool. I think Soderbergh is, is like, like yeah, that, uh -huh. right? Yeah. 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 And I've worked with directors on, who are like that too, you know, where yeah. like, actually I haven't worked with one who's physically grabbed the camera yet, but I've worked with directors who will like, just like, all right, like go over here. All right, now we're over here. You yeah, know, like yeah, very really specific. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. Tony, anybody else want to know anything? Oh, uh, yeah. Boy, well, I tell you, you make my good. job easier on this show. Hey. Oh, they, everybody <laughs> wants <laughs> questions. Questions make it easier. Yeah, we're busy today. This is great. Yeah, this is um, great. Okay, so it's a bag on the director day. <laughs> uh, I know, poor directors. <laughs> the poor right? directors. I just want to say that I, I love directors. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a director I've worked with and you're watching I, this. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. I it's want you to know. <laughs> and I want you to know something else. If there was a director sitting here, we'd be bagging on the DPs. That's, that's for right. sure. That's true. So, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. No. Uh, Andrew Red, our good friend. Yes, Andrew. Andrew, Andrew been on, be the on the show again. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how do you deal with a director <laughs> yeah. that doesn't know <laughs> anything about, you know, about camera, oh, i.e. angles, placement, coverage, etc.? That's a producer, isn't it? Just uh, watch my language. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's, um, you know, with that... Um, I think you're just saying, what do you do with, with a bad director? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because a director right, should it's, know those it's part things. Of, yeah. It's part of making a movie is like, you know, that, that is your movie. Like the, the visuals and the angles, stuff like that. You what else is you there? You don't need to be a micromanager, but like, but you do need to know what you need. Yeah. And you need to know that at least the basics of that language. Right. So for me, when I am working with a director like that, um, honestly, I just try to adopt whatever that director's language is. Yeah. You know, like, um, if I if they're using wrong terminology all the time. Yeah. And I know it's wrong. Like honestly, I'll just I'll just go with it. You know, and just. Like, because that's easier than me trying oh, to give God, him a lecture, yes. you know, so. It's like when yeah. somebody mispronounces your name and you look over and go, I'm going to spend five minutes with this person for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't correct them on I the do name. that, but, yeah. but there's also, like, I, I try, because usually for me, what's frustrating is not necessarily when a director doesn't know anything about that stuff. 
It doesn't know, so when a director doesn't know anything about that stuff, but then try pretends that's the word that he or she does know everything about that stuff. Yeah. Um, and where that pretending comes from is a sense of insecurity and yes. the feeling that it's the imposter syndrome we were talking about earlier. Yes. Like, oh, they if this if the DP finds out I don't know this, then exactly. then he's gonna. So what I try to do is make that director feel. Safe. Comfortable. Safe and comfortable. comfortable. And that, I, like, like I, I try to do this with, with everyone working beneath me mm-hmm. and above me, everyone on set, around me. I try to create an environment where it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, yeah. you know, that there's not this, like, uh, I'm not going to bite anyone's head off. Yeah. And, and that, that's the same with the director. So if I, I find when the directors start feeling that sense of security with me, that I'm on, I'm on their side, that, 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 that pretending doesn't happen. And then that lack of knowledge, it, it really isn't an issue because yeah. it's, it's them coming from a place of humility and talking to me. And, and, then, and, and I respect them more too because I know that this vision that they have is, is valuable and ha- has yeah. value. And it's a, it's a matter of me figuring out how to take their kind of non-filmic terms and translate that into uh, something cinematic. Right, right. And you know, it's hard to believe that, that a director would be in that in the the director's position without yeah. knowing those things, but it happens, yeah. and it happens for yeah. actually some good reasons. Sometimes sure. it's somebody who just knows the subject matter that mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. but they're not a filmmaker, mm-hmm. you know, um, or you know, money, you yeah. know, you you, yeah. you make, that's the director you could afford, mm-hmm. you that's know. True. So it's it's like, but I think that comes right back to us all. Being able to be professionals, mm-hmm. working by the seat of our pants, and be problem solvers on set. Really, yeah. that's why they hire us. Yeah. Is to fix it. It's true. You know. Tony, what do we got? We got another one? Uh, oh, I, I got to have you on every week. You're back every <laughs> week. Every Friday, you're back. We get questions. Um, another uh, question from Nicholas. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, uh, when budgets get higher and with, with it, possibilities multiply. Um, and you, and you really still have to do the best possible work. Does that does it frighten you? How do you how do you grow into the new situation? I mean, as you're as you be, I guess the question really is as you become more experienced and you get more success and your budgets start increasing, does that change how you approach yeah. projects? I think I actually talked about this on um, mm-hmm. one of the previous shows yeah. I was on yeah. because the answer is no, it doesn't change how I approach. Right. You know. Right. As budgets gets bigger and I'm working with more gear, I'm still pulling on all of the same techniques and knowledge that I've learned sure. on that low budget stuff. Like if I'm going out and lighting something with a one ton, I'm, the the thing is like is figuring figuring out, and this is something you say a lot too, is, is mm-hmm. how to think about light and how to how to understand you know what what's going on in mm-hmm. a room mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. with the lighting and the camera, and then for me it's the camera and, and how to capture that light yes. is a big one. And that's the same on like a one hundred thousand dollar feature or a ten million, you know, a hundred right. million dollar feature. Like right. that's that's like your. I mean, you're gonna you might be using some bigger tools or more right. things here and there, but like but those principles, they're Are, they're all the same. Yeah. If you watch BTS from like um, like you know the Dark Knight trilogy or sure. Marvel movies, they're like they're doing. A lot of the same stuff. It's not, <laughs> yeah, not, it's not that, super different. Yeah. yeah, the main difference with that bigger budget stuff is that you you have to be able to like get into these setups in right. and out pretty quick. Right. And and it might be more complicated because camera moves. You know, like you're gonna have to I don't know, do like these big 360s or something. It has to has to look good from every direction. So maybe there's more rigging. You know, like let's say that that's it's like your the principles of how to approach it are pretty much the same. But but once you get into these bigger like in my experience it's usually the rigging that gets like that it, more it complicated. It is so true. So, let, uh, yeah. let me give you an example yeah. of what I see when I look at it. When I'm watching a scene that they've shot mm-hmm. in, say, like a room mm-hmm. or studio, it's obviously, but it's a room, it's mm-hmm. an interior. The techniques that they're using are, mm-hmm. I think, simpler almost than a lot of the stuff that I That's do true. in the in the corporate pieces yeah. because they're more insecure and they're trying to look. Bigger and better, right. you know what yeah. I mean. But but it's it's simpler there. Where I look at it and and maybe have these same reactions that that they're asking about mm-hmm. is when I see some major like green screen studio scene, right. you know, where there's different levels on it. And there's like, a, but when you get down to it, yeah, you're still left 
with your lighting a green screen and right. your lighting an actor. Right. Now maybe that takes 2360 sky panels. Right. You know, I instead mean, of two space lights. Right. I mean, and you're capturing an environment. Exactly. So, so it's like on a smaller scale, you might be walking into a place like I did with that diner scene we showed. And, and I'm kind of figuring out, okay, we're going to, how do I capture this environment? And then figure out, and then like the actors. On a large scale, you're kind of deciding your environment. And so yes. you can just kind of, you can kind of imagine like, well, like, it'd be great if the environment was like this. And then after that, like, for me, like, I would try to imagine it as like a, like my ideal environment that I would yeah. go capture, you know, yeah. but it's like, yeah. but yeah, but it's created and then you kind of walk into it and, and take it in and then capture it just like you would a practical think, location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that that's mm -hmm. very true. And you know what most of it is? I, I, cause I do it to myself probably daily, mm -hmm. psyching yourself out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just talking Relax. about the imposter syndrome. That's part of it because you sit there worrying like, Oh, how am I going to do this? You know what? Have confidence in yourself. And mm -hmm. I've started doing this, in, you know, a while back. Right. And just like, hey, if I can't figure it out on set, I'll give them the money back. Right? <laughs> I mean, but there's never been a time for yeah. that. Don't that is that a out. totally mind screw to <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you will figure it out. Of course you'll figure it out. Yeah, I won't give your money back if I yeah, can't yeah. figure it out. So, yeah. Actually, I'm, neither will I. Will I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but but you know it's it's just what we do to ourselves. Uh, oh, phone call. Yeah, don't you know I'm doing a TV show here? Yeah, come on, Brad. Glad to, come on, Brad. Yeah. Just because you're in Chicago, that doesn't mean you can call me between two and three on Friday. <laughs> you should know that. All right, very Thank good. Sorry, Brad. Mm -hmm. I'll call you right back. I'll call you right back, Brad. You probably had a question. There. Yeah. All right, I we're good. We're good. All right, um, Tony. How much time we got left? Oh, uh, it's three o'clock now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Started great. late. Tell me what's on. What's what's in the, what's in the future? Um, let's see. Well, yeah, just got some more shoots uh, this month. Uh, I haven't gotten too many details on them yet, actually. But just some, you know, smaller, like shorter run shoots this month. So that's mm -hmm. nice. You gonna do a little, um, little narrative? You gonna do? Yeah, narrative? Ne uh, some narrative at the end of this month, short form, and then a feature in August. Oh, great. Um, and then I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm talking with some other. Yeah, I'm, I've had a lot of people talking to me about features this year. We'll see how many actually pan out. Eh, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, never know yeah. with those. You'll, but, get, um, you'll get one or but two. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, we're shooting one in August up in San Francisco. That'll oh, be a lot of great. fun. Great script. Um, it's going to be super cool. That's great. Yeah. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. William, thank you so much for coming by today, Absolutely. Buddy. Thanks for having That's me so again. Awesome. Oh, I, yeah. I, I love to have you on any time. I mean, <laughs> I, I personally learn something every time yeah. you're on here, so I Good. appreciate well, that. Great. Um, and it, you're fun to be with. I'd like to spend yeah. 10 hours with you on a set. <laughs> so it's no problem. Love and it. everybody, thanks for tuning in today um, uh, and, and checking out William and I. And also, you can get this on um, SoundCloud. We have it as a as a podcast now, so awesome. we, we upload them. This one will probably be up next week or so, but but we've got a bunch of them on there, so check it out. But everybody, we'll see you next Friday at two o'clock on Bernie's Apple Box. All right, thanks. Cut. That's a wrap.